YouTube, welcome back to my channel, Taylor Talks Tales. Today I have a video for you. It is what I read in April slash my April wrap up video. So I've tried to film this video a couple of times and it's just come out a little weird. So this video is going to be a little different than my March what I read video in that I'm going to talk about the books I read, but they're going to pretty much be title, author, and my star rating, go through the books that way, and then talk about the notable books, either the one stars or the five stars or books that I wanted to highlight from my month of April, just because I read so many books in April. I think it's been one of my most successful reading months ever, partly because of quarantine. My hours have been fairly limited at work, so I've filled it with mostly reading books. So I ended up reading 33 books total. Some of them were novellas and there are some shorter books in there, but then there are some longer books mixed in. So uh, overall, it was a very successful reading month. Today in this video, I'm going to talk about 27 of them because the other books were either like nonfiction, self-help, or uh, a few Dresden Files books, which I've completed the series, and I'm going to be doing a totally fun, awesome review, series review that'll be coming out sometime in the end of this month or beginning of next month, depending on what my filming schedule is like, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, let's get into this video before it gets too long. So. For starters, I'm going to start with my one star and work my way up to the five star reviews. Funny enough, two of my one star books happen to be ebooks. So one of my friends sent me two ebooks to read, and they're going to be on my phone because my computer is currently dead, and I'm using a Mac and it's not compatible with the editing software I recently got. So I apologize for showing you my phone, but I want to show you the covers of these books. So. We have The Wives by Taryn Fisher, and we have Bethany Sin by Robert McCammon, which Robert McCammon is one of my favorite authors, I want to point out, but this was one of his not-so-great works, because all authors have that. So, we'll start out with Wives was one star, Bethany Sin was one star, now we're going to get into the physical books, and I'm just going to list them off, show them to you. So, we have... All the Little Children by Joe Furness. This was one star. Neverworld Wake by Marcia Pessel. This was two stars. Little Girls by Ronald Malfi. Two stars. Peter Heller's Celine. 2.5 stars. Pitch Dark by Courtney Almeida. Three stars. The Last Astronaut by David Wellington, 3.5 stars. Cricket Hunters by Jeremy Hepler, 3.5 stars. The Deep by Alma Katsu, 3.5 stars. The Hatching by Ezekiel Boone, 3.5 stars. Penance by Kanai Minato, 4 stars. The Loneliest Girl in the Universe by Lauren James, four stars. The Hunger by Almakatsu, four stars. Revenge by Yoko Ogawa, four stars. Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir, four stars. The One by John Mars, four stars. Night Shoot by David Sodergren, 4.5 stars. Of Foster Homes and Flies by Chad Lutsky, 4.5 stars. A Cosmology of Monsters by Sean Hommel, 4.5 stars. The Rue by Alan Baxter, 5 stars. The Forgotten Island by David Sodergren, 5 stars. Sour Candy and Belenki, both by Keelan Patrick Burke, both five stars. I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reed, five stars. Stephen King's The Institute, five stars. And last but not least, The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix, five stars. 
So, I had a very successful reading month, as you saw, and the vast majority of the books I read I really enjoyed quite a bit. I think my most disappointing read was either a toss-up between The Wives or, uh, I think I would say All the Little Children. So this book, in fact, I would say this is my most disappointing read of the month because with The Wives, I kind of went into it expecting it to not be so great. I've heard some mixed reviews about it, so I didn't have very high expectations. Um, I tried to keep open-minded, but I kind of went into it sort of expecting it to either be hit or miss. This one I thought I would like. So I love po post-apocalyptic fiction. I love disaster scenarios. I love survival. All of that. So this book follows two mothers and their children, and they're going on a camping trip together, and they're in the middle of the woods when a pandemic hits. I thought it would be a fun read um, with the pandemic going on. And with this disease, it kills the vast majority of people very quickly because it's a there, there's some cause to it being a very extreme virus. And it's all about them trying to figure out what's going on and trying to survive, etc. But unfortunately, this book had potential and it completely missed the mark. I didn't care for any of the characters. They're very nonsensical. They do things that just don't make any sense to me. They should have died very early on because they had just no survival skills whatsoever. And my favorite character is the dog, for sure. <laughs> um, and I think the most frustrating thing about this book is, well, there are many frustrating things, but the most frustrating thing, too, is that it ends in a way where you think there should be a sequel, a follow-up, this is part of a series, something like that, and the author has specifically said, no, it's not that at all, the ending is the way she wants it to be, which means there is no ending, and it's the kind of open-ended ending that I don't like, because I don't mind an open-ended ending if there's a reason for it. Like, if there's some mystery to it and it's good to, for discussion, um, I do tend to like books with closure, but it, it all depends. But this book is nothing like that at all, and it was just very disappointing. So I'd say this is my most disappointing read of the month. Um, just very, very sad, because I went into it thinking it would be you know, at least a three-star book, but this was just not an enjoyable experience. Um, same with The Wives, which I'll show you the cover again. Uh, the Wives was slightly less disappointing. It was also a one-star read, but you can see there are quite a few people on YouTube. They either love it or hate it, and essentially, for me, I think I didn't really care for it too much because it's the type of domestic thriller that I don't really care for, um, but I wanted to read it because one of my friends liked it and sent me the ebook and yeah, basically you're following this one character she's uh, part of a polygamist family essentially um, there's the husband and he has multiple wives and all the wives are named after days of the week and then she starts to suspect that something's up with her husband and starts investigating things and fortunately the plot twist and just so many things about this book just didn't work for me and it was pretty disappointing so um the one thing is I did read the entire thing, so it was success it was successful at keeping me turning the page to figure out what was going on, but once it was revealed what everything was about, I didn't really care for it. So I would say those are probably my two most disappointing books of the month, and I'm going to show you my favorite books of the month. So if I had to pick the top books of the month, I would definitely say Stephen King's The Institute, Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. The two novellas I read by Keelan Patrick Burke were fantastic novellas. I was very blown away by them. Uh, I'm thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reed and The Forgotten Island. In fact, of all of these, the book I kind of want to talk about in particular is The Forgotten Island, mainly because this was not well known to me. I heard a couple things about it, but it's not one of those books that a lot of people talk about. So I went into it not knowing what to expect, and I was just very, very pleasantly surprised with this book. It was very enjoyable. I didn't have any complaints about it. And it got me to check out the author's other book. Well, actually, I think he has three books out, and 
I'm going to be ordering the third book that he has coming out. Um, the other book of his is Night Shoot, and that one was very enjoyable too, but this one was uh, a stronger book, I would say. And in this book you follow two sisters, and they are a little estranged from each other. They have a complicated relationship, but they decide to leave their home in Scotland and go to Thailand, and they are kind of partying and checking things out, and the sister has this jerk of a boyfriend named Paul who just wants to have sex with her and is very selfish and self-centered. Um, but they end up getting involved in this big party. This is a full moon party. They get super drunk, and they wake up on a boat, and then all of a sudden this boat ends up on this mysterious island, and things go from there. And I don't want to say anything more about this book because I think the less you know about it, better, but it was very fun, very enjoyable, and David Sodegren is a huge horror fan, so for anybody who loves horror, pick this one up because it feels like you're reading both a horror book, but also I feel like this would be adapted into a movie really well, and you could just tell that this guy knows horror, he loves horror, and it was just so much fun. There's a lot of survival and adventure, and you know, there's, I don't want to spoil what's on the island, but it's very cool what's on the island. So this was very, very fun. I'm going to do a full-fledged review on it shortly. And I also want to talk about the Institute. I wish I hadn't put reading this book off as long as I did. I think it's because my ex-boyfriend had read this book and he said it was fine, but not one of his favorite Stephen King books. So between that and then I ended up not being able to get a copy at my library. It just took me a while to get access to reading this book and getting a copy. Once I got a copy and I sat down and read it, I really enjoyed it a lot. A lot more than I thought I was. And I, it's Stephen King, so I was thinking I was at least going to enjoy it. And yeah, it was, it was good. And I think for those of you who've read it, you'll probably know why I'm saying this, but I think this is a really interesting book to read with everything that's going on right now because I think one of the key elements of this book is how far are you going to go to protect the greater good. I don't want to say too much more to, to spoil it, but that's sort of the theme that I got from this book and it was really interesting the way it was told too. Um, the first few, I don't know, maybe 40 pages or so, I almost thought I was reading, I was just like, wait a minute, is this the right book because I thought I knew what this book was about and then it it cuts to what I thought it was going to be but it's just very solid and was very enjoyable. I rated it five out of five stars. I'll do a full-fledged review but Stephen King he still got it and I think this is one of my favorites of his newer books that have come out fairly you know in the last like five or six years. I think this is probably one of my favorites of that. Another good book I want to talk about in this wrap-up is the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. This was great. So with Grady Hendrix, I've had some hit and miss books with him. Um, I enjoyed my best friend's exorcism. It was a four out of five star read for me. Horror Store was a little less than that. Um, it wasn't bad. I, I, he hasn't written a bad book, but I feel like he has some missed potential with some of his books where they're, they're enjoyable, but they aren't, they don't, go the full mile when it comes to horror, where I'm like, I want things to be a little spookier, I, I want his books to be a little bit more intense, and he kind of, it's almost like putting your toe in the water, but not being fully submerged, where it's just like, there's there's some more I think he could bring to his stories. But this one was very good. I liked it a lot. Pretty much this book is fun, this group of southern ladies in the, like the late 80s and early 90s, um, main character is Patricia, and she suspects her next-door neighbor of being a vampire, and all these ladies, they really like their true crime, and it's, it was just very, very fun and enjoyable, and I really enjoyed reading from a different perspective, um, you know, you don't really have a whole lot of books where you have housewives, you know, solving mysteries and kicking butt and doing all these all these things. So it was very enjoyable. I think that Grady Hendrix, this is his best book yet, and I highly recommend it. And also, full-fledged book review will be coming out on this book as well. So those are sort of some of the books I wanted to mention. And I do want to show off 
I ended up reading quite a few novellas this month. I read all, all four of these books are novellas. So we had A Foster Homes and Flies, which was very, I wouldn't necessarily call this horror fiction, but it was dark fiction and it was very, very good coming of age story. Then of course, I already did my review on The Rue and then two more, two more novellas. And I must say, there are some really solid horror novellas out there. I tend to read full-fledged books and I don't read a whole lot of novellas, but this has kind of been changing my mind a bit where all of these were four and a half or five star books. So I am definitely checking out some more. Um, I'm going to be uploading my TBR for May, either tomorrow or the next day. And there are some novellas on that as well because I think novellas and horror go really well together. So that was definitely a pleasant surprise. And there's only a couple others I want to showcase and sort of highlight um, in this video to keep it from getting too long. But I do want to say another slightly disappointing book for me was Never a World Wake by Marcia Pestle. Um, I wanted to point this out. I will be doing a full-fledged review on this. Um, but I want to say Night Film and Special Calamity or special Topics in Calamity Physics are two books of Marcia Pestle's that I really enjoy, especially Night Film. It is one of my favorite books, um, not just in, in any genre, but it's actually on my top 20 list of favorite books. So I probably went into this book with too high of expectations, but this one, the premise is awesome. It's essentially these teenagers, they are meeting up after not seeing each other for a while, and they're meeting up a year after their friend mysteriously died. And they end up getting trapped after a series of events in this thing called the Neverworld Wake, and they're experiencing these things, these things called wakes, where they're repeating the same 11 hours over and over again. And then soon it becomes this race for survival, but figuring out what's going on and also trying to solve the mystery of this boy's death. And it's so cool. And Marcia Pestle is a brilliant person, I imagine, because I've enjoyed all of her work, and you can tell she's smart. Um, I just don't think that it comes across as well in this book. I think there are, the characters aren't fleshed out, and they don't seem very authentic to me. And there's this one Southern character who kept calling people child, and I'm like, people don't talk like that. And just... There, there's too much nonsensical and um, things just didn't quite add up and there are just inconsistencies and it was just such a bummer because I was expecting to really like this and this was also a bit disappointing. So I want to talk about that because a lot of people really like this book. So I'm kind of putting myself out there a little bit and saying I've got a differing opinion by a lot of people who really love this and I apologize that if you're one of them, but I just had a lot of issues with this book, so I'm, I'm going to be uploading a full-fledged review on this one as well. And of course, if you see any of the books that I had mentioned and you want me to do a full-fledged review on it, let me know because I am totally happy to do it, and at some point I'm also going to try to get through as many as I can. I tend not to do a lot of reviews of the three-star books, if or books that just kind of were sort of like, they were okay because sometimes it's hard to drum up a lot of emotion to talk about it. It's easier to talk about the one and two star books or the five star books. Um, but yeah, I think I'll also wrap this up with a, a couple more books I just want to showcase really quick before I wrap this video up. Cosmology of Monsters was very enjoyable as well. This one is an interesting story because I feel like there are horror elements to it, but it's a very kind of quiet type of horror. It's very light on the horror, I would say, at most times. Um, it really reads more like a family drama, but that's okay. I, I like all types of books. And I did like the spooky elements to it and this family that we're following, basically we've got the main character, Noah, and his family. Um, you find out, like, his parents, how they got together, and how there's something that may be following their family down the generations, and he befriends a monster, and it's all about him growing up. There's a little bit of a coming-of-age element to it, and it. I think I recommend 
just going into this book not knowing too much about it. In fact, I don't even think I read the blurb except for in one of my TBR videos, and then I just tried to forget about it, and it was it was good, but I can see why some people are not going to like this if you are expecting this to be like chock full of like action, adventure with monsters. It's not going to be that type of book. It's more of a, you know, a quiet type of horror as I would ultimately say it. But I still liked it. I thought it was really enjoyable and um, I'm going to be doing a review of this because there's a negative comment I saw on Goodreads about something which to me I feel like the author or the Goodreads commenter didn't finish reading the book because there's something that happens that I feel like if you stop at that point you're gonna think one thing happened but if you kept going something else happened sounds a little confusing but I'll explain it in the video but I do think this is really worth checking out all right last book I want to showcase from this video is Cricket Hunters so Cricket Hunters there are not a lot of reviews on Goodreads or anywhere about this book. Um, it's fairly unknown, I would say, and I think more people should check this out. So this was a very interesting story. I picked it up because I really enjoy coming-of-age stories, and this one sounded really unique to me. Um, essentially, there's this group of kids, they're the cricket hunters, they're 15 years old, and one of their friends disappears, and then it's told in a dual timeline. So there's stuff that's going on in 1998, and then there's stuff that's going on in, I believe, 2013 or 2015. And so it kind of goes back and forth. I, the reason why this is 3.5 stars for me is, I'll, I'll talk about the good stuff really quick. Good stuff, there is some magic in this that I was not anticipating. So Cell, the main character, it's short for Celia, she lives with her grandmother, and her grandmother is really into magic, or like witchcraft. She's a bruja. So a bruja is a uh, like Spanish or Latina witch. And that factors in a ton in this book, which is really cool. I wasn't expecting that at all, and I really like magic, especially magic that feels very real, like real conjure, real witchcraft, wicca, that kind of stuff. And so that was a really neat aspect of this. Um, and I think for this author, I don't think he's published a whole lot. I think this may actually be his first book. So for a first book, I thought this was a pretty good debut. Um, I think for me, one, I don't think this is actually a true coming-of-age story, even if there's a dual timeline and there's kids involved, because there are some characteristics I feel like a coming-of-age story needs to have, and it was lacking some of them. Doesn't mean it, you know, wasn't, but I think it really truly is the the part, maybe the part coming of age might be in this, but it's not a full coming of age novel. Um, and some of the characters, there, there are a few things that just seemed a little out there for me, and they're a little, there are just some issues that I'll go more in detail on a full-fledged review of it, but it's still worth checking out. It's still um, a solid story. It was, I'm glad I read it, um, and even if it wasn't perfect, and I know in this copy that I had there were some editing problems, um, it's still worthwhile, and I definitely do want to check out more stuff by this author. So, thank you so much for watching this video. I apologize if it's, if it's an, a bit of a strange format. I think once I go back to my job and I'm not plowing through all of these books, my what I read and my wrap-up videos will be um, a little easier to film and watch for you guys because I don't want to be super crazy. But if you have any suggestions on how I could film this type of video in the future if I've read a ton of books, I would really appreciate it. And I also want to point out that I have a new camera. So I hope you guys like the new camera and, you know, again, if there are any things you think I should tweak with the, the new setup that I have, please let me know. I'm always looking for uh, ways to improve my channel. So thank you guys so much and stay tuned for my TBR and also announcement for another giveaway that I'm going to be doing that's going to be coming up soon. And of course I've got a ton of book reviews to show you guys. Now that I've got a new camera, I'm going to be back to uploading regularly. So thank you so much. Please like, comment, rate, and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later.